Abu Hanifa. If you're a person who's engaged in fiqh, you're a child of Al Imam Abu Hanifa and what he did for fiqh. He was the first person to take the chapters of Al Islam in fiqh to say the chapter of Tahara, the chapter of As Salah, the chapter of Wudu, the chapter of this and that. He was the first one to do that. Rahimahullah ta'ala. So the people are reliant upon him. And Imam al Dhahabi said about this statement that Al Imam Shafi said, he said, this. Imam, this imamah that he had, the leadership that he had in fiqh, and the precise issues of al-fiqh, they are something that there's no doubt about and people shouldn't argue regard, in regards to this issue. No doubt, an imam Abu Hanifa was the grandfather of the fiqh for not only his madhab, but the entirety of this ummah. Does that mean that he, radiallahu anhu wa rahimahullah, wa ghafara lana, Walahu, ghafar Allahu lana, walahu. Does that mean that he was infallible? Does that mean that he never made a mistake? Does that mean that we should take what he said when it's in contradiction to what the Prophet said or did? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Of course not. The uqala, the intelligent people from the ummah, who their fitr fitrah has not been contaminated, they know the answer to that is simple and easy. Al Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah. Anytime they used to mention Al Imam Abu Hanifa, he used to say, Rahimahullah, Kana Yatarahim Alehi. He used to ask Allah for the Rahmah for Abu Hanifa. Although he made some disparaging marks about Abu Hanifa later on, as you're going to see. When they told Al Imam Ahmed, Al Imam Abu Hanifa is in the prison. The Khalifa has him in the prison. And he's being ex he's being persecuted because of his desire not to be in the government. He's being persecuted. And Imam Ahmed used to cry. And Imam Ahmed used to make dua for him. Because he knew the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Man atta abwaab sultan uftutina Anyone who comes to the door of the leader, anyone who comes to the door of the leader, it's going to be a fitna for him. You'll start giving fatwas maybe that you may not believe. You may not practice your religion because you become impacted by those people. That's what our prophet said. And some people are like that. Al-Imam Abu Hanifa didn't want any fitna. So he refused to be in the government position of being the judge of all of the people. Someone may come and say, you see, this is why we make takfir of those ulama who are in this government or that government. Because of that hadith, anyone who comes to the door of the sultan will be tried. The Prophet said that those people are tried. The Prophet never said that the ulama who are living today are tried. They're prone to being tried in their religion and it could happen to some. But you can't come and specify and say he's tried, he's tried and just eradicate all of the ulama because of this hadith. And if you were to do that, then the main student of Al Imam Abu Hanifa, his main student, Abu Yusuf, he took the place of Al Imam Abu Hanifa. Instead of Abu Hanifa being the main judge, his student Abu Yusuf was the main judge for the government that Abu Hanifa didn't want to deal with. So Al Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah Taala, used to have love for Al Imam Ahmed, Imam Abu Hanifa. He recognized and acknowledged his position. There are other scholars in Al Islam. We just want to draw your attention to them, Khwani, like Al Imam Abdullah bin Mubarak. Abdullah bin Mubarak was a student of Al Imam Abu Hanifa and a contemporary, and he's one of the people who really defended Al Imam Abu Hanifa. Abdullah bin Mubarak is one of the ten people who was given the title Amir al Mu'minin fil Hadith. He's at the upper echelon. There's no one above these ten people. Al Imam Malik is from them, Al Imam Ahmed, Al Bukhari, Al Imam Muslim, Al Imam Sufyan, Al Thawri. From them, Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Abdullah ibn Mubarak was a man who all of the khayr was inside of him. He was rich, he had a lot of money. When he used to perform the Hajj, Abdullah ibn Mubarak would take a lot of his students with them, and they didn't have to bring any money. And when he was in Mecca, he would give them money to buy gifts to come back and give the gifts to their family, their children, and their wives. Abdullah ibn Mubarak was a scholar who, he just didn't sit in a masjid and teach the people. Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to go out and used to make jihad fi sabilillah. Half of the year teaching, half of the year making jihad fi sabilillah. And he used to try to make jihad in the month of Ramadan. 
And Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak was a personality, as I mentioned, as Al Imam al Dhahabi said, all of the khasal of Al Khair ishtamalat fihi. All of the good things that you could think of that we strive to be, they were in Al Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak. He said concerning Al Imam Abu Hanifa that he is more knowledgeable in fiqh than Al Imam Malik. They asked him, who is afqa? Who has more fiqh? Malik or Al Imam Abu Hanifa? He said, Abu Hanifa is afqa. He said, Al Imam Abu Hanifa is an ayat from the ayat of Allah. He's a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sufyan al Thawri, he said that Al Imam Abu Hanifa was the most knowledgeable person in his country. Sufyan al Thawri, again, Amiru Mu'mineen fil Hadith. We have Al Imam Abu Dawood al Sajistani, and everyone heard of him. He was one of the six Imams who brought the books that are the most famous books of Hadith, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, the Sunan of Abu Dawood, Al Tirmidhi, and Nasa'i, and Ibn Majah. And Al Imam Abu Dawood, Ikhwani, he, although Muslim's book is better in hadith, Abu Dawood was more knowledgeable than Al Imam Muslim. Al Imam Abu Dawood, his book was way up there, and he, as a faqih and a muhaddith, he was up there. He made a dua and he said, Rahim Allah, Al Imam Malikin, Fenu Kani Imamin. Wa Rahim Allah Ta'ala Al Imam, Al Shafi, Fenu Kani Imamin. Wa Rahim Allah Ta'ala Al Imam Aba Hanifa. May Allah have mercy upon Al Imam Malik because he was an Imam, a leader. And may he have Rahmah upon Al Imam al Shafi because he was an Imam, a leader. And may he have Rahmah upon Abu Hanifa because Abu Hanifa was an Imam. These people were Imams who should be followed, like in these days. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al Nahl. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillah hanifan wa lam yakun min al-mushrikeen Verily Ibrahim, he was an ummah, an ummah And he was qanit, standing up in obedience to Allah And he was hanif, leaning towards the tawheed of Allah Away from shirk and kufr And he wasn't from the mushrikeen The meaning of Ibrahim is an ummah Not that he was a nation by himself an ummah like the ummah of al-Islam were a nation. The meaning he is and was an ummah, he was an imam, yuqtada bihi. He was a person to be followed, do what he did. Sacrifice the way he sacrificed, be a person of tawheed the way he was. And Imam Abu Hanifa, he was an imam. That's the meaning of the statement of Abu Dawood, rahimahumullah ta'ala, that he was an imam along with those other imams. Now concerning the people who made disparaging remarks against Al Imam Abu Hanifa, some serious things were mentioned against him. Serious, very serious, by some very serious people as well. On one hand, when we see that Al Imam Malik, Al Shafi, Ahmed, when we see that Abdullah bin Mubarak, Sufyan al Thawri, Abu Dawood al Sajistani, when we see them praising an individual, we say that these five Imams in the scale are heavy. Al Imam Yahya ibn Ma'in, he said that Al Imam Abu Hanifa was thicker in hadith. Yahya ibn Ma'in is a man of a jarhwa ta'deel. That's his science, that's his forte. We put those six people in the scale, and you as a Muslim, you have to pay attention to that. Because those ulama are not like the ulama who we have today. They were on another level. But if you look at the people who said negative things about them, they were more and weightier, and they had their proofs, and it was even some of these people who made good statements about him. Scholars criticized Al Imam Abu Hanifa for a number of reasons. One reason is in hadith, he was da'if in hadith, he wasn't a reliable narrator. You have some people who say he's thicker and he's an acceptable narrator, but at the end of the day, when you look at what was really said and why they said it, the proof is with those scholars who took the opinion he was da'if in the hadith. You can be da'if in hadith and you're still an imam. You can be da'if in hadith and you're still a faqih, the father of all jurists. So some of our brothers who have a ta'asab to al-imam Abu Hanifa, 
by hook or 